The new school year is beginning and the discussion about so-called school vouchers, that's popping up yet again. During the last legislative session in Texas, Governor Greg Abbott pushed a proposal that would allow parents to use taxpayer funds to help pay for private school tuition. Well, that failed, but this week the idea of school choice came back up for discussion during meetings with the Texas House Public Education Committee in Austin. Lawmakers spoke with people from out of state about their school choice programs and opponents also voiced concerns that these programs could take funding away from already struggling public schools. Tonight, our media partners at Texas Monthly are diving into a similar plan that's already being reviewed at a North Texas school district. The proposal is being pushed at Princeton ISD. Forrest Walder looked into this idea. He's joining us uh, tonight now. Forrest, thanks so much for being with us. Uh, tell us how the proposal for Princeton, Princeton ISD would work. Yes, yeah, so this is a really novel concept. Uh, it's never been tried before. Um, it's a little complicated, but essentially the way it would work is that Princeton ISD would partner with this nonprofit called Texans for Education Rights. They would then um, go out and seek private schools that would want to enter into this partnership as well. So these students would be, technically they'd be enrolled in Princeton ISD, but they'd actually be receiving an education and attending school at private schools throughout the state using taxpayer dollars uh, that would be coming partially from uh, the, the state, state coffers. Um, so it's sort of a voucher-like program, but what's it, but what's interesting is that it wouldn't be something the legislature would authorize. It'd be something that would essentially be created by Princeton ISD or any other district that wanted to, to do something similar. Yeah, it sounds to be kind of sort of a, a workaround <laughs> in this whole process, uh, sort of a thing. Uh, how much money would Princeton ISD make as part of the proposal? Uh, you think, and and what are what are the risks for us? It's not entirely clear how much they would get. Um, their uh, leadership, their superintendent, and their board members said they wouldn't be pursuing this if it didn't provide significant financial benefits to them and their students. Um, the draft contract that I saw was something like $300 per student, uh, which means that the lion's share of funding would be flowing past or uh, through Princeton ISD and going to the partner, the nonprofit partner, and the, the private schools themselves. Um, as far as risks, uh, there's significant risks, and that's why they've been talking about it for a year and a half and haven't actually gone through with a contract. Um, the main risk, I think, is liability. What happens if these students that are enrolled in private schools do not receive an adequate, adequate education according to state standards? What happens if this nonprofit, which has never done anything like this, is not able to do what it says it's supposed to do? What if the whole thing just doesn't turn out to be viable financially or otherwise? Who bears the responsibility? and the risk for those types of failures. That's something they're negotiating, and I don't think that there's a clear answer to that yet. Yeah. Uh, wh what do we know about Princeton ISD and why they were picked for this proposal? H how did that sort of come about? Um, well, uh, so the, 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 the folks behind this proposal had actually tried this um, uh, 2022 in uh, Wimberley ISD, which is in the Hill Country in Central Texas, and, and it didn't work there. So I, they then pretty quickly thereafter went to Princeton ISD. I think the reason why is because there are, is a school board, there's a majority on their school board there um, that it feels pretty strongly about school choice and voucher issues, i.e. They're, they're in favor of, of vouchers and school choice in general. And some of these members were politically aligned with the backers of Texans for Education Rights, specifically uh, Monty Bennett, who's a, a prominent CEO in the Dallas area, who's been a longtime school choice advocate, who essentially created this organization and is sh shopping the plan around to, to districts who are interested. Okay. And this is one who has shown an openness to openness to at least discussing the proposal, not actually going through with it. I, I know you mentioned uh, that, you know, obviously there's been some pushback to all of this. Uh, how has Texas Foundation for Education Rights, how have they responded to criticism regarding this proposal? What are they saying? Well, I think what's interesting is actually I'm not a, I, I don't believe that people in Princeton ISD, the community at large, is really all aware this is happening. Um, it's a little complicated. Um, not everybody's, you know, sort of immediately understands what's happening here because it takes some time to, to, to explain it. Um, and so there, so there hasn't really been, as far as I could tell, like a, a full public airing. And so any criticism that's happening is, is, is sort of happening internally, i.e. in these discussions that they're having at their board meetings and that sort of thing. And 
Um, I mean, I, I think their the response to the criticism has largely been, you know, we'll get we'll get back to you on that, and that's been a problem. You can see that in my reporting, you know, just for the last year and a half is they haven't been able to answer the questions that some of the board members and the superintendent have to the satisfaction of the trustees and, and the superintendent. And that's why essentially it hasn't, the contract hasn't been signed. It may never be signed. Yeah. Wow. So that makes sense. All right. Very complicated. Like you said, uh, uh, it's sort of a very layered topic here, uh, but we thank you so much uh, for us for joining us, for taking some questions and helping us dive a little deeper into this. And of course, folks, you can read the entire article right now. It's on TexasMonthly.com. We've got more news and weather coming up next.